going to talk about the envelope section present on the Korg ARP 2600M. The envelope section is here, right where the envelope section is. That was really helpful. Okay, so first we're going to talk about the ADSR envelope. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how many videos of mine you've seen, but we've talked about ADSR maybe a trillion times, so <laughs> I don't know how much I can really add to it, apart from demonstrating to you uh, just basically how this is. I get the sense it's a little bit better than the original ARB 2600 and uh, the large size Korg ARB 2600, which was very authentic. Um, it just, it seems like it's more responsive than uh, the original, which was terrible. That's the one weakness of the ARB 2600 is the ADSR is just not, it doesn't operate in the way that we typically expect. But anyway, so right now I have the ADSR controlling the amp. And uh, so we can just kind of hear some aspects of it. Uh, throughout the demonstration thus far, I've just had the sustained voltage up. So. Okay, so we have, of course, attack. Decently long attack, decay. Not super long attack and decay. It seems kind of like the original. I mean, it's a little bit different than how ADSRs typically work these days. And of course, release. Not a hugely long release. And of course, just a full on envelope. Of course, we can use it to control the filter. So that is your basic. ADSR and of course although it is hardwired to a variety of things like for example the filter all of the oscillators uh, you can certainly take that envelope and use it to control uh, through the output anything else you might want to whether it's in the ring modulator or you know you can affect it through the voltage processors in some way or etc so you have that option in addition to the ADSR we also have the AR which is just attack and release. Okay, let's take that. Well, actually, we could hear that as well. Let's take the, Let's set it up like the ADSR so we can hear both amp and filter. So we'll just take the output. You have an output from the AR. We'll put it in the ADSR input. Anyway, uh, this is just us just hearing the amp. has a longer release time. And maybe a longer attack time. Anyway. You know, obviously less control than the ADSR, but still totally usable. Um, so that is the attack and release of it. Keep in mind between the ADSR. Well, let's actually let's hear it with the filter too, just for fun. You'll get 
different sounds from the AR envelope than you'll get from the ADSR, so it's useful. Anyway, um, I also want to remind you that there is this button here that says manual start, and what that does is sends a trigger that will activate both the ADSR and the AR. It's like a key right here on the face. So if ever you're doing something where you're not controlling it with a keyboard and you want the envelopes to happen, you can press that button. Or if you want to add to what you're playing with the keyboard, you can press that button. And that's really cool. You also have the gate output from the keyboard and a trigger output from the keyboard that you can direct in a variety of places uh, throughout the system to generate outcomes. Uh, the gate can be used, uh, like for example, if all of your envelopes are doing something else and you want the envelope, uh, you want a sort of envelope shape to control your pulse width modulation, you could take the gate out and put it into the envelope or into the lag processor and output that into your um, pulse width modulation input, and then you'll get kind of this terrible fake envelope that will work <laughs> if your other envelopes are busy, etc. And the trigger um, you can use, well, certainly to output, you can use that to control external things in the system, and there are other things you can do, like, for example, the external clock in on the sample and hold. Uh, you can then get your sample and hold to work basically each time you press a key, which is a lot of fun. And then of course, and this is really cool. Okay, so this switch here, there's a switch, uh, keyboard, which you're basically switching between keyboard control of the triggering and gating of the envelopes and the sample and hold clock output. So then, With that switch engaged, basically you're getting something that metrically triggers your AR and ADSR envelopes, which is really cool. Uh, we'll talk more about that in another video because you can do a lot more than just have that metric repeating, but it is really cool. It's a great way to have, get the system playing itself, and uh, there's a lot you can do with it, obviously. Uh, if you... Um, if you're using a variety of the other synth synthesis tools that are available. If you have an external clock, uh, if you have something that can generate triggers, you could put a trigger input here that was a sequenced beat or something, and you could be setting off uh, the envelopes in some sort of uh, rhythmic fashion instead of just a repeating metric fashion. Anyway, you also have, of course, the output, which I've already demonstrated, of the AR section, so you can direct that elsewhere. And uh, yeah, these are the envelopes present on the ARP 2600M made by Core.